My name is Mira Das Gupta. I am 16 years old and the 2020 United States Youth Poet Laureate with Urban Word NYC and the National Youth Poet Laureate Program. So first of all, I just want to say thank you for inviting me here, especially during a time when we all feel so isolated and are experiencing the world in a multitude of ways. It is important that we stay united and collectivize our artivism. So once again, thank you for this platform. Now, before I start, I just want to talk a little bit about the National Youth Poet Laureate Program and then why poetry matters to me. So the National Youth Poet Laureate Program is this initiative spurred by Urban Word NYC in order to com combine civic engagement and artivism in a way that can uplift young leaders' voices. So far, it's in 50 cities in 40 states, if I'm not mistaken. And this year, I had a virtual commencement, so my tenure is going to be very different than years prior, though that is something that has been a constant no matter what situation we've been in because we have all had unique voices and Urban Word NYC and the National Youth Poet Laureate Program has only led us to uplift them. So I thank them as well for all of that. And as per the question, why poetry matters to me, poetry has allowed me to remain vulnerable on the page and express my emotions in a way that I could never have if I didn't discover this passion. And it has also allowed me to go on stages and in front of audiences big and small and to activate and to change the world in a way that I could have never fathomed perhaps even a year ago. And it allowed me to see that my words are of value. And I hope you know by just by being here, you are making a difference within our futures and that your words are of value too. And by writing poetry, we are rewriting the narrative. And a lot of people said 2020 was canceled, but I believe that it is a stepping stone for all of these young advocates in order to make a tangible difference within their communities and on a global scale. So I just wanted to say thank you to all of you for being here and for allowing yourself to be so open with all of these things that are happening and to accept the fact that sometimes news and facts can't influence or affect people the way that art can. So thank you. So for my first poem that I am going to be reading, I am going to be presenting my poems as victims of gun violence, and I've performed it multiple times recently, but that's only because I want a multitude or numerous people to hear it because it feels so prevalent to today, and I want to make sure that these narratives and these stories are being risen or uplifted within this time. So, thank you. My poems as victims of gun violence. This is where my poems go to pen their eulogies. They bleed a black ink and find a casket that blends well with the ground. I do not know if my poems prefer gardenias or roses. The rapid firing of a gun leaves my poem bloated with sudden death, judgment, a narrative in which they don't have a name. America remembers the anniversary of my poem's memorial, lights a candle but forgets that my poems are not love poems. 
My poems are students tearing up the streets in their new Air Jordans. Are teachers holding the big apple in the palm of their hands? Are janitors mopping up the mess that other poems have left behind? My poems aren't bulletproof. My poems bury friends before they bury themselves. My poems sob when dissecting frogs in biology class. Have gloves on so the blood can't streak their hands in transaction. My poems love their mamas. Still kiss them on the forehead before going to bed. My poem shot a fizzy glass of white privilege before it shot them in the forehead. My poems pray to God sometimes. My poems reread horoscopes. My poems do not pretend to know the future, so they walk to the horizon and stay there. Shatter the sky until their bodies parch the light of their names. Dance in the shadows until they are but one writhing black mass in the distance. Their death eclipsing the sun where they stand. And I feel as if that is a very powerful poem and every time I read it, I personally have to take a breath because I feel as if inspiration comes from anywhere and when I wrote it, I think that what inspired me was all these people who are rising above the system and who are fighting for what they believe in and achieving within their passion. So thank you for listening to that and I'm gonna move on to another poem that I wrote very early on in the year and I believe that it was either, no, it was before I became the New York City Youth Poet Laureate, and it's called Explaining Brown Girl Feminism to a White Man on the E-Train. Explaining Brown Girl Feminism to a White Man on the E-Train. Brown Girl Feminism, afraid that blisters tongues not keen on holding Asian spices. Changes the name of this poem to a white man's lament in Masala Tears, but this rickshaw has no room for another man spread. Or the venti chai latte, he said, looks like you masticate me like the cardamom in a pakora. Spit it out onto a paper plate only to sprinkle salt back into its diaspora. Makes it savory. Pick ancestral bone from chicken curry, but when you swallow, let history be hookworm, and it got engorged by self-entitlement. Make, make it enough for you to tell me that I am caramel popped into working jaws, honey. I sizzle like the steak. Rise like steam on the Bombay sidewalk. What is milk to chili pepper? All you seem to do is curdle in the marinade as I froth over kettle. Cleave origin from clavicle. Ascend like the smell of grandma's kitchen into drying linens. I am a borrow taste buds. Voodoo queen in the cupboard. Girl born into a body pressure cooked by nature versus nurture. Tell us sorry. I spilt tea on your white privilege and slice too much meat off of his bones, but I thrive in culinary, which means no food waste, so I place him in a dusty cabinet elsewhere. Atop life, slick oil stains and cinnamon rolls. Someday spooning powdered pieces back in to trade recipe, he is but ingredient, eternally searing in the heterogeny that is my mother's home style biryani. Thank you. And I wanted to share that with all of you because I feel like sometimes when I read it, not everyone understands where it comes from and I feel like I need to read it more because it's a part of my experience that has shaped who I am, has taught me so much and I grew from it because it is something that happened and I hope it resonated with you and 
I hope that for the rest of these readings, you continue to absorb what these amazing, wonderful poets are saying. And for, I have no idea how many times I've already said this, but thank you once again and hope you have a wonderful time and a wonderful festival. So thank you for being here.